Hi guys, welcome to Like an Astronaut. My name is Anissa Kureishi and today I am gonna be talking about why. Why I started this YouTube channel, why I like space, just why. So this like age eight. I'm in a small room in London gazing at plastic toy planets. Imagining what it is like to be up there in space. My life wasn't easy growing up, but my passion for wanting to one day work in space and go up there is what kept me going. I remember creating this like robot, which didn't fully work, but it was made out of boxes and like dismantled pieces of electronics, which was like on a mission to go to the moon and excavate for water. So yeah, I, I had a big imagination growing up and these turned into big dreams, you know, wanting to, to explore space, wanting to be involved in that scene. And I wasn't shy about talking about these dreams at school at first. However, this wasn't matched and I think a lot of these dreams were larger than life for a lot of the peers around me and wasn't met with encouragement and, you know, the same level of energy. This only further fueled me as the rebel inside of me wanted to embrace this curiosity and to keep searching for more. So I'm 16 years old and it's my birthday. My dad comes down and he says, I'm taking you to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. That was incredible to hear. I mean, I do not come from a well-off family, so going to America was a treat and going to the Kennedy Space Center was literally like, is this Halloween? Because I feel like I'm being tricked. So yeah, it was incredible to hear. A few months later and we're in New York and I am taken back by the sheer size of America, the roads, the buildings. I mean, literally the skyscrapers look like they're high five in the, the, the clouds. It was insane. I mean, I was born and bred in London, so I know what it's like to live in a capital city, but a city of that size was, yeah, it was, it was a real experience. But that's not why we were there. We were there to check out the Kennedy Space Center. One of the coolest things I experienced at the Kennedy Space Center was the shuttle launch experience. Now this was incredible because it genuinely felt like I was in a rocket and I was going to the ISS, I was going to the moon. And I actually felt like all of these, you know, icons that I looked up to, these astronauts, were not so far away from me. They were something, they were someone that I could be. When I was in year six, which is fifth grade, I had a teacher who actually told my mum that I wasn't very good at math and actually I was going to fail it. When I found this out, my mum pushed me and pushed me and pushed me and kept me, you know, motivated and didn't let that get to me. And I passed and I did very well. In application, I think you can really see the beauty of mathematics and the magic behind it. And so, at King's College London, I did mathematics and computer science. And getting into King's was a pivotal moment for me. It's a world-renowned university, and I think it really cemented, and it really taught me that I, I can do it. What I had discovered at King's College London was the University Air Squadron, which is part of the Royal Air Force. So I was part of that for a year. First of all, it was not easy to get in. To get in, you have to do a fitness test, you have to go through an interview process, you have to do a medical test, and they evaluate you from the beginning to the end. Gave me the, you know, the opportunity to fly, to get survival lessons, to get military lessons, and also I wasn't um, deployable, so I couldn't actually go uh, to war. So I did four hours of flying with an ex-Harrier pilot in the Grob Tutor 115. It's a small aircraft. And the feeling of flying is a feeling of it's like a spiritual one. It puts all the problems in perspective. It puts all these boundaries and barriers and this is one city and this is separate from another city. It just kind of blurs all the lines. But flying and, and being up in the sky is something that I think I might be getting a bit obsessed with. I've flown, done two skydives, both for charity. Um, and, you know, if you can't be an ESO or NASA astronaut, you could always just skydive higher and higher and higher until until you're in space. So I've graduated from King's College London, done mathematics and computer science, still haven't found that specialty, that sweet spot. But what I have found is the International Space University, which is based in Strasbourg, France. Now ISU is basically space school. Um, you have researchers and academics in different space disciplines. You also have astronauts who teach you, people who have trained astronauts. Um, you have guest lecturers from loads of different private space companies all over the world and it's an international school so people from all over the world come and study in one place when i found out about this i had to go i knew that this was going to be the next step for me to discover my specialty but also to introduce myself to that space world and isu was an incredible experience um 
This school literally brings people from all over the world, different backgrounds, qualifications, careers, disciplines, different languages, all in one place studying together for a year in, in France, in a region called Alsace. It is quite an intense course. We do projects. We worked on a team project on space tethers at the end, which we presented to NASA and the Chinese Space Agency and the European Space Agency. And just before graduating, I got into iSpace, a lunar space exploration robotics company. As a business analyst there, I met engineers and the first, and at the time, the only, I think, lunar scientist that was working for a private space company and she was literally like mapping the moon i think what it what it made me really excited about was space robotics i mean what is this you can send this autonomous machine to the moon to go and find water discover it extract it and turn it into something else and be the stepping stone of creating a community on the moon and that's what iSpace wants to do. They want to partner up with other companies because if they're going to go to the moon, they're going to have to collaborate with other companies. So they want to create that collaboration to build that community of people living and traveling to the moon. And robots is one of the ways they're going to do that. So one thing to note is that ISU is a holistic master's degree, which means you go through eight disciplines. These disciplines above. What it does is it applies space to each one of them. But not just that, it doesn't just stop there with those eight disciplines. You have visiting lecturers coming from all sorts of fields. Space is changing. It's now new space. And here, space is for everyone, literally. If you wanna be a musician, you can still be involved in space. If you wanna write books, you can still be involved in space. You just apply it to space and you have literally a space for you. So one of the other things I learned at iSpace was data and how important is space not just in terms of data science and the moon and mapping the moon but also satellites satellites are being used to capture information about the earth through sensors and send it back to us so we can understand this planet that we live in but also how to make it better and that's what companies such as planet and spire are doing so it's four years on and i'm here i've been working in a lot of exciting tech startups and analytics trying to understand how the data stuff works but now i want to apply it all to space i'm also still very interested in space robotics so i've been doing some online courses on that and the way that I've kept in touch with the space world is through conferences. I mean, I was in Cyprus a few months ago where I learned about the importance of leveraging satellite data and how it can benefit this planet. All these lessons I've learned, all these experiences I've had are nothing if I can't educate the people around me and get them involved and part of this journey. So that's why I have this channel, Like an Astronaut. So I am no astronaut, I have never been to space, but I have aspirations to one day go. And instead of me waiting to be trained by, you know, ESA or NASA or get into ESA or NASA, which is highly competitive, I thought, why not just train myself? Why not just experience it? Why not use my network to learn about what it is like to be an astronaut and then teach you guys? And you guys can be part of my journey and we can do this together. We can discover this together. You can let me know what kind of things you're interested in learning about and I can use my network and my experience and find out more and create content that hopefully inspires the younger generation. So all in all, being involved in space isn't just me doing one thing, it's gonna be a few things. And YouTube is gonna be one of them. I think YouTube is gonna be one of those things that helps me complete that mission that I set out for myself at age eight in that small room in London where I was aspiring to be part of the space world. And not only just me, but hopefully you too. But hopefully you can get involved and be a part of this journey and realize and tell other people that space is for them if they want to be involved and space is accessible. And it's not just for one race or one job or one gender. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you have any ideas for future content, please drop a comment below. Remember, you are part of this journey with me. Don't forget to press that like and subscribe button. Remember to stay safe and hopefully one day I will see you in space.